So most people believe that their level of intelligence or IQ is the greatest indicator of success in life. But is it scientifically true? Well, let's dive into the book Emotional Intelligence by Daniel Goleman and find out what the truth really is. Now let's first go into the labs of Walter Mischel back in 1960s in California. What they did was study four-year-old kids. They got a group of four-year-old kids and offered each of those kids one marshmallow. But then they gave them test. They said, if you don't eat this marshmallow for 20 minutes, we will give you another marshmallow. Now what happened? Of course, some kids ate the marshmallow and some kids waited for the second marshmallow. Now the researchers followed these kids and then 14 years later, they again tried to figure out what had happened to their lives, where were they today? Now, 14 years later, the kids who couldn't wait for their marshmallows, what were their SAT scores? So the average SAT scores of kids who couldn't wait for the second marshmallow, who just ate the first marshmallow, their average score was 1052. While the kids who waited for the second marshmallow, their average SAT score was 1262, almost 20% higher than the kids who couldn't wait. And not only that, these kids were more socially competent, could handle pressure better and embrace challenges in life. So what was going on here? And here are the implications of the study, the marshmallow test, that these kids who were able to delay gratification, these kids had emotional intelligence. They were able to handle impulses and being able to handle impulse is one of the most fundamental skills, psychological skills. They were able to delay gratification. They were able to deny impulses in order to serve their long-term goal. And that ability is crucial to long-term success. Now let's look at another component of emotional intelligence, which is the ability to handle defeats and challenges. Now in history, stories of all the great performances and achievements, and they're all laden with defeats and challenges and setbacks. Elon Musk was on the brink of losing both SpaceX and Tesla and going bankrupt in 2008. He rose from that setback to become one of the greatest entrepreneurs of our times. Michael Jordan was cut from his high school basketball team, and then he rose from that humiliating setback to become one of the greatest basketball players ever. So these stories of rising from failure are what history is really made of. This is a very common theme amongst all great achievers. Now what's going on here? So what research is saying is that our achievement is life is not just a function of our level of intelligence or talent, but also a function of our capacity to withstand failures, setbacks and defeats. Basically, it's our ability to handle defeats and challenges, ability to handle those tough emotions. And a sister concept to this is the idea of self-efficacy, which says that when you have self-efficacy, you have this feeling that you can handle life's challenges as they come. And that is crucial to emotional intelligence. Now let's talk about another really key component to emotional intelligence, which is your ability to handle pressure, handle anxiety. Now if you follow sports, you've probably seen that some players perform really well under pressure while others just break down. They choke under pressure. What's going on here? Well, it is all about their ability to handle those tough external situations and regulate their emotions in those moments so that they can perform at their very best. Now. Let me ask you, when do you perform at your very best? When there is very little pressure to do anything or when there is too much pressure? Well, for most people, there is a peak performance somewhere in the middle, not too little pressure, but not too much pressure. Some pressure is good, but too much pressure can be bad. And that optimal performance zone is where you want to be. Now the key is that the elite players, the clutch players, they can stand in the face of pressure and regulate their emotions such that they get themselves in the peak performance zone. Even when there's too much pressure, they can get themselves in the peak performance zone. They don't let the situation dictate their emotional state. The external situation does not dictate how much pressure they feel and hence they can do their very best. So now let's step back a little. So far we've talked about three keys to emotional intelligence. Your ability to handle impulses, your ability to handle defeats and challenges, and your ability to handle pressure and anxiety and nerves. What do they all have in common? They all have in common the idea of the ability to handle your emotions. And the ability to handle emotions only comes when you become aware of those emotions. The awareness of what is happening to you rather than being lost in it is crucial to emotional intelligence. That awareness is called self-awareness, also called metacognition. When you can be above the flow of experiences while you're experiencing those experiences. And that awareness of emotions as they come, as they go through you, is the ultimate key to emotional intelligence. And that 
awareness is the ultimate key to great performance in all walks of life. And how can we develop this self-awareness, this metacognition that we talk of? Well, one of the most powerful ways you can develop your metacognition, your self-awareness, your overall emotional intelligence is through mindfulness meditation. Over 1,000 different scientific studies have now come to the conclusion that mindfulness meditation helps us develop self-awareness, emotional intelligence, mental toughness, brain power, focus, concentration, and a lot of other great benefits. And not only that, mindfulness meditation helps us reduce stress, anxiety, depression, and a slew of other psychological problems. So overall, mindfulness meditation is a wonder drug for our minds. And I want to help you get started on meditation. So I have been meditating for over 20 years now, and I've put together a really simple guided meditation recording that you can just play at any time and start meditating. All you really need to do is download this guided meditation audio here and press play and you will be meditating in no time. You can also download the guided meditation audio at 2000books.com slash meditate. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. And if you would like to grab a copy of the book, well, the link is in the description below.